Now, if you're anything like me and a big time soup lover, but are looking for a really simple recipe, this chicken and wild rice soup is where it's at, my friends. We're talking about 60 minutes from start to finish to get this soup on the table. It's creamy, it's amazing, and you are gonna love it. So this is my mom's absolute favorite soup. No matter what restaurant she goes to, if it's on the menu, she has to try it. And her and my dad are coming in town in a few days, so why not make a huge pot? We need to start by knocking out a little bit of prep and getting our chicken going. Sound good? Let's cook. We've got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts in between seven and nine ounces. And of course, the first thing we wanna do is season them with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Remember, season high, be about a foot away so that every square centimeter of that chicken is seasoned and every bite is delicious. Now head over to your cooktop and in a very large pot, we're gonna add in some olive oil. Go ahead and crank that heat up to high. Once it begins to lightly start smoking, we know it's perfect time to start sauteing, just like I always say. Go ahead and add in your chicken breast to the pot. Put them about an inch or so apart from each other so they get that perfect golden brown. Immediately turn down the heat to medium. And then after three to four minutes, let's go ahead and give it a flip. Yep, perfectly golden brown. And just one more because yeah, they look really, really good, juicy, golden brown, perfect. Now crank the heat down to low, and what we're gonna do is cook it for five more minutes before flipping it and then cooking it for another five minutes. And let me stop and say yes, this is just like the chicken cooking process in my nachos video. After you get it brown, you flip it over and you let it cook for five minutes, and then you flip it back over and cook for another five minutes on low heat. Or you can do my perfectly cooked chicken breast method, completely up to you. Just make sure it's cooked through and golden brown. Now what we're gonna do is get started on cutting up our mirepoix, our carrots, celery, and onions. Beginning with these large carrots, I'm going to go ahead and peel them, and then I'm simply going to medium dice them. If you want a large dice or roughly chop, totally fine. We're gonna do the exact same thing with some rinsed stalks of celery, give it a nice medium dice. And then, of course, we've got a small yellow onion. I use smaller ones these days because my wife doesn't really like onion flavor. Go ahead and cut off the ends, cut it in half, and then of course peel it. And then I'm going to small dice this so that it incorporates into the soup a little bit more seamlessly and there's not big chunks of onion in there. Last but not least, garlic. Run it through that garlic press, don't chop it. You're gonna be sick of it after 20 years, just like I am. We're gonna scrape off the end, make sure we got everything in there. And now head back over to that cooktop. Let's go ahead and take a look at our chicken. And what we wanna do is simply pull it out Go ahead and set it onto a plate and then simply set it to the side. And in that same pot, we're gonna add in the carrots, celery, onion, and garlic. What we wanna do over low heat is simply sweat these vegetables. We're not looking for a full caramelization. We just want them to be a little bit tender before we finish the cooking process. So now, head back over to your cutting board. Let's go ahead and place the cooked chicken breast down on there and then using a really sharp knife. What we wanna do is roughly chop this, but we want them to be nice bite-sized pieces. Nothing worse than taking a huge chunk of chicken or another vegetable. So after slicing them, turn them, cut them again. It's okay if it's rough, no big deal. We just want them to be bite-sized pieces. Set them on a plate or in a bowl, go back over to your cooktop. And then we're gonna simply scrape them right over top of our tender cooked vegetables. And now it's rice time, my friends. I'm gonna be using about a cup and a quarter of a wild rice blend. Don't forget, when water and liquid hits rice, it swells up, so you're only gonna need that much. But when it comes to this, you can use whatever you want. This one has a blend of dark wild, red, brown, and basmati. You could use just basmati, just brown, just red. I wouldn't recommend using all dark wild rice. It's just not gonna taste that good, maybe be a little bit more earthy than you're used to. But at this point, simply pour it right over top in with the chicken and vegetables. So go ahead, take that bowl right over to that big old pot on your cooktop. We're gonna simply sprinkle it in. Doesn't have to be any uniform thing, but you can see all that beautiful rice grain. Next, add in some chicken stock. I, of course, have some homemade. If you need that recipe, click that link, my friends. And now what we're gonna do is just simply take a spoon, give it a little mix, get some things incorporated. And at this point, we're gonna add on the lid. It's gonna take about 25 minutes to cook over low heat. Let's come back, take a peek, and boom, beautiful. It's gonna be really hard not to eat it now. It smells delicious and it actually tastes really good even without anything else. 
but if you want to know that it's done, go ahead and take a little spoonful out. You see how that red rice has been cracked and it's opened up? We know that the rice is perfectly cooked, everything else is done. It's time to finish up this soup. But first, we need to make a slurry and thicken up the soup. This is simply a thickening agent using cornstarch and water using a spoon or even a whisk. Mix these things together. You could also use a roux or even a liaison if you wanted to get super classic -y French, but we'll stick with the slurry. It's way easier to use. Now, make sure your soup is at a nice bubbly little simmer because this is gonna help activate that slurry. So add it right in and then immediately start to move it around with that spoon. You'll notice within a matter of seconds that it becomes really thick. You can see it here. It starts congealing. All those vegetables and rice are at the top. This is perfect. Now we're going to cream it. Add in some heavy cream or even some half and half would be just fine. Don't worry if it thins out a little bit. The rice and the starch from that is going to keep thickening it up. And it's all about understanding simple techniques like understanding how to make a slurry so that you can thicken a sauce or a soup and then cream it when it's done. So simple, but once you understand a lot of these things, you put it into your cooking and you're gonna make the best homemade food ever. It's gonna be from scratch, it's gonna be better than anything you're gonna get at a restaurant or of course the store. So now what we're gonna do is finish off our soup and I'm gonna add in some fresh chopped parsley. We of course wanna adjust the seasonings with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Remember, taste twice, season once, taste it, season it, see if it needs a little bit more after tasting it. And now, it is definitely time to stir this up and plate up, so let's switch over to slow motion. I like to serve this up in little tiny bowls because it's actually really rich and extremely filling with all the rice and the vegetables and the chicken in there. So in a little maybe soup crock or a smaller size bowl, go ahead and add in a ladle full. And then for a little bit more greenery, that sort of fresh look, I like to add in some chopped parsley. Set it down on whatever you plan on eating it with. Maybe it's in front of the TV or on your kitchen table and eat it with your family. But for now, check out this beauty. So delicious, so easy to make, and maybe your mom will like it just as much as mine. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to check out this video because that recipe is so good. I'll see you on there.